Les grands titres sont une présentation de Desjardins Vaudreuil-Soulanges. Cette année, Desjardins Vaudreuil-Soulanges célèbre 80 années d'existence active dans notre territoire. Nous sommes fiers de soutenir la coop C'est sur la télé, qui, dans l'hebdo régional, donne les informations importantes de Vaudreuil-Soulanges. Bonne émission. En manchette cette semaine, Yvon Marcoux annonce son retrait de la vie politique. Votre Roy Dorian hosts resident information sessions over the new Costco outlet. Et l'Office national de l'énergie approuve le projet d'inversion de la ligne 9B d'Enbridge. Bonjour et bienvenue à l'hebdo régional bilingue de Vaudreuil-Soulanges. Bonjour Carmen. Hi Willy, welcome to the weekly bilingual news broadcast for Vaudreuil-Soulanges. So Willy, it's official, we're in provincial election and there are some new players on the scene. En effet Carmen, le député de Vaudreuil, Yvon Marcoux, annonce dans sa circonscription qu'après avoir représenté ses concitoyens pendant plus de 15 ans à l'Assemblée nationale, il ne sollicitera pas de nouveaux mandats. Élu pour la première fois député de la circonscription de Vaudreuil aux élections générales du 30 novembre 1998, M. Marcoux a occupé plusieurs fonctions dans l'opposition officielle et au sein des gouvernements libéraux qui se sont succédés. Il a été ministre des Transports, ministre de la Justice ainsi que vice-président du Conseil du Trésor. Plus récemment, il était porte-parole de l'opposition officielle en matière de relations internationales et de la francophonie. Selon M. Marcoux, il s'agit d'une décision difficile prise après une profonde réflexion avec son épouse et ses quatre enfants. Il a informé M. Couillard la semaine dernière. Within days of Marcoux's retirement, it was announced that Notre-Dame-Lille-Perrault mayor, Marie-Claude Nichols, would be taking his place as the provincial liberal MNA. Following discussions with Liberal Riding Association President Annick Poirier, the decision to pick Nichols over two other candidates was made public March 7th. Nichols had recently been nominated as prefect for the 23 municipalities in the Vaudreuil-Soulanges MRC, the first woman in the position's history. She has been mayor of Notre-Dame since 2009. La ville de Vaudreuil-Dorion sera finaliste dans deux catégories au mérite ovation municipale de l'Union des municipalités du Québec. Le projet Les artistes du bonheur est nommé dans la catégorie culture, patrimoine, sport et loisirs et le projet Le Défi des Mosaïques dans la catégorie Approche citoyenne, Vie démocratique, Relations interculturelles, intercommunautaires et Relations avec le citoyen. Le mérite Ovation municipale récompense les municipalités qui, peu importe leur taille, leur population ou leur situation géographique, se sont distinguées de façon originale grâce à des projets visant à améliorer la qualité de vie de leurs citoyens. Il s'agit de la deuxième fois que la ville de Vaudreuil-Dorion est retenue comme finaliste au mérite Ovation municipale. Following a three-year dispute with a local family, the city of St. Lazare has granted a 100-day extension to the Bassenden family on the order to vacate the mobile home they've been living in since a 2011 fire destroyed their house. The family's insurance company refused to pay to rebuild the home, saying the homeowner was running an unauthorized car repair business on the premises. The family has appealed the town's order to the Supreme Court of Canada level without success. They now have until June 30th to remove the trailer from the property, a deadline the city says will not be extended under any circumstance. The city of Vaudreuil-Dorion will be hosting an information session for citizens living near the proposed new Costco wholesale outlet on St. Charles Avenue near Highway 40. Area residents had expressed concern about the potential increase in traffic and elected officials want to address residents' questions. The city has been addressing infrastructure needs in response to the anticipated growth in businesses in the area. L'Office national de l'énergie a récemment approuvé l'inversion dans le pipeline 9B d'Enbridge. Un groupe de citoyens de la région Vaudreuil-Soulanges, les citoyens au courant, a manifesté à plusieurs reprises son opposition au projet. Pour nous en parler, nous recevons la porte-parole du mouvement, Madame Catherine Massam. Bonjour Madame Massam. Bonjour. Welcome to the studio. Hello. Alors, Madame Massam, pouvez-vous nous dire à quel endroit passe le pipeline dans la région? Oui, euh, 9B passe à de North Westover, en Ontario, euh, à Montréal-Est. Alors, quelle année a été installé le pipeline? Le pipeline a été installé en 1975. À l'époque, euh, c'était Interprovincial Pipelines qui est devenu Enbridge. 
Euh, il est enterré à trois pieds. Euh, à l'époque, euh, c'était correct parce que la machinerie agricole était plus léger. Maintenant, c'est beaucoup plus lourd et ça pose problème aux, aux agriculteurs. How is the group handling the news about the decision to allow the reversal? Uh, the decision was made on the 6th of March by uh, the National Energy Board. Um, it was uh, made with 30 conditions. So they approved the reversal project, um, but they've asked Enbridge to um, work heavily on the integrity of the pipeline and provide evidence that the, the pipeline is safe. Um, we're not surprised that the, the project has been approved because we were told before the, the um, public hearings that there was a 97% chance that they would be approved. Um, but we're disappointed that the National Energy Board has ignored the recommendations of the Quebec government. Okay. In, in what way exactly? Well, Quebec government held um, a parliamentary commission uh, last year in December. Um, and they asked Enbridge to, um, to carry out 18 recommendations that were very, very reasonable recommendations. Um, they've m largely been ignored by Enbridge and the National Energy Board. Um, and we feel that if, if they followed those recommendations, the project would be safer for Quebec. What's your primary fear about having the flow of oil reversed in that pipeline? Well, firstly, the reversal itself um, stresses the pipeline. Uh, so um, that, that's one element. Secondly, they're going to increase the flow from 240,000 to 300,000 barrels per day. So more volume, increased pressure. Um, that also stresses the pipeline. And they're changing the product. product. So they could have uh, oil from Bakken, which is a highly inflammable, um, fracked oil like the one that exploded in Megantic and they're also going to put through their um, diluted bitumen from the tar sands which is like a, a molasses which is diluted with toxic chemicals like benzene so if there is a, a rupture or a leak um, these products are, are dangerous more dangerous than conventional oil more difficult to clean up more explosive in the case of the back and oil um, and a, an independent engineer who carried out a, um, a risk analysis on the pipeline said that there is a 90 percent chance that it will rupture in the first five years of the inversion 90 or 19 90 wow um, he's, as far as I know, the only engineer who's done an independent uh, analysis of the pipeline. He submitted his research criteria to the National Energy Board and they were approved. And he submitted his report in August 2013. So, uh, we are concerned about our drinking water. Mm. Et le, la nature du produit qui va circuler, bon, vous venez de le dire, va changer, mais l'objectif de de cette inversion, ce pétrole va pour qui exactement Alors, euh, il y a quelques mois, euh, Enbridge ne disait pas que le, le, le pétrole qui allait couler d'ouest à est serait destiné pour la, la population, l'utilisation québécoise. Euh, peu de temps après, euh, le message a changé euh, et ils ont dit que ça serait pour les raffineries de l'est de Montréal et, et, et pour les vies. Um, donc, uh, moi, je ne sais pas. Je ne suis pas économiste, je ne suis pas uh, dans l'industrie. Mais ils disent que ça va être raffiné à Montréal et utilisé par la population du Québec. Je, à, ma, à ma connaissance, il n'y a aucune preuve de ça. La décision est vue comme bonne news par les uh, chambres de commerce dans l'Est de Montréal. Comment uh, do you counter les gens qui disent que c'est bon pour notre économie de economy? I, I'm not aware that those jobs at the refinery in East, of, East End of Montreal are in danger. Um, I don't think anyone's actually proved that's the case. I also know people who live and, and work in, East, in the East End of Montreal who remember when the refineries were much more active and there were more of them um, and suffered health problems at that time. Now the refining of this product is going to cause a lot of pollution in a very densely populated area. And uh, Montreal already has a, quite a bad air pollution problem. We have 1,500 deaths per year on Montreal Island related directly to air pollution. 
which is very, very expensive for taxpayers, apart from the human cost. So um, I'd say um, it's not as simple as all that. But can those health problems be definitively linked to the refineries or are there other contributing factors like you hear a lot about wood stoves? Yes, wood stoves, traffic pollution, but um, it's definitely true that the refining of this product will um, increase that pollution significantly. Um, so the population in the east end of Montreal um, I have read will suffer from more asthma, um, more, more smog and, and and air, air pollution. Also, uh, the processing of this product, if they install the cracker to, to, to do that in, in Montreal, um, will produce a product called Pet Coke, which is um, a product nobody wants. Is this a byproduct it's of the refining process? It's a, yeah, it's a waste product which doesn't really, uh, it's not really usable very, very, very easily. So, What's going to happen with all the pet coke? In Detroit, where they already define it, they, they dump it by the river. There's a huge mountain of it. So um, I haven't heard that they've got a solution for that. Last year, uh, Enbridge made a number of donations to um, fire departments in municipalities in the MRC. Uh, what do you think about these gifts of surrounding regions? Well, um, res any project that has to do with natural resources needs social acceptability. Um, if the public rejects the project, and that could be a mine, a pipeline, whatever, then it's very, very difficult for a company to get investors um, interested in the project. Enbridge would have great difficulty um, with this project if the, if the Quebec population rejected it. And that's regardless of any rules, regulations, um, approval or anything. So um, they've, they've given money to municipalities, they've got their, their photos with shaking hands with the mayors and so on. Uh, they've given money to the um, uh, Cyclo Défi uh, for Cancer, they've financed uh, uh, the Orchestre Symphonique de Montréal at their concert. Um, so they're, they're working very hard, they've, they've, they've also um, sponsored winter festivities in Ottawa working very hard to come across as a, a, a people-friendly company. What does your group see as a viable alternative for the 9B reversal plan? Well, according to um, the Research Institute, um, IRIS, uh, if we continue putting all our eggs into one basket and developing the tar sands, uh, we won't be developing alternatives. Um, and we just, we just believe that, that we're going in the wrong direction. Um, the expansion of the tar sands by 500% has been um, considered by the uh, International Energy Agency as catastrophic in terms of um, global warming. So we just feel it's not wise and that, that we should be going in different, another direction and developing green jobs. Madame Assam, avez-vous un message à passer au gouvernement du Québec? Oui. Vous avez décidé de ne pas participer aux audiences publiques de l'Office national de l'énergie sur Enbridge 9B. À la place, vous, fait, vous avez fait une commission parlementaire. Euh, à la fin, vous avez mis 18 recommandations très raisonnables, dont la majorité n'ont pas été reprises par l'Office national de l'énergie. Si je peux me permettre d'en nommer un ou deux, vous avez demandé à ce que euh, Enbridge fasse des tests hydrostatiques sur le pipeline. C'est recommandé par un, 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 un ingénieur indépendant. Vous avez demandé à ce qu'on prenne des tests préventifs d'eau dans les, les puits privés ou des, des puits de surveillance. Plusieurs recommandations très raisonnables, dont un fonds de prévoyance, tous rejetés par l'Office national de l'énergie. Si vous tenez à protéger la population québécoise, si vous tenez à en faire euh, un projet sécuritaire qui protège nos sources d'eau, vous devez insister que Enbridge respecte ces conditions par respect pour la population. Si le gouvernement du Québec dit non à ce projet, à moins de respecter ces conditions, Enbridge va trouver ça très difficile d'avancer. Alors, mettez vos culottes et insistez qu'on les respecte. What can area residents do to get involved with Citoyen au courant? They can contact us directly. But don't forget also we're in an election period now. So um, I would suggest they write to their MP, the provincial MP, and say, 
Um, what are you doing to ensure that the government's 18 conditions get respected and say that it's important? Eh bien, merci, Madame Massam, d'être venue en studio aujourd'hui. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Two Rigo brothers and filmmakers have crafted an eight-minute film depicting a mythical world of knights in shining armor, magical forests, and mesmerizing children in their first acting role. Here to talk with us is filmmaker Sebastian McKinnon. Welcome to the studio. Hi, thank you. Bonjour, bienvenue. The actors in this piece, they really don't look like amateurs. How did you stumble upon these kids that are so brilliant in front of the camera? Yeah, well, it was um, quite a challenge to find because I knew I needed to find these, these kids to play the, these roles. And I was very much looking for that um, ethereal quality and that uh, innocence. Um, and that's something that you, it's very hard to find with uh, usually like uh, kids who are already acting, you know. So I wanted to find people, uh, kids who had not acted before, that were, had no experience, um, so that I could capture that, that, that newness, that just that natural state. Mm -hmm. And uh, they, they walked into my mom's shop in Hudson, and my mom knew she w we were looking desperately for these, for these uh, children. And uh, we, we met, and we had an audition, and that it went from there, and they, they were fantastic. And to what I found surprising is that they, re, they understood the concept of like subtlety in acting. Absolutely. As, yeah, especially for a film like this where there's no dialogue, it's all, uh, the story is told through the stares and through the way they look at each other. And, and uh, so they, they were just fantastic, incredible, yeah. Et vous avez choisi Montebello pour le tournage, pourquoi ce, ce choix? Parce que ça nous donnait, uh, ça nous offrait des lieux magiques. We had to find places that uh, felt otherworldly. Other and around Montreal, it's very tough to find. And, and we uh, grew up in Montebello as well. We spent the summers there as a family. And so we knew the area well. And we were able to locate uh, very specific places that were special to us as kids where we would hang out, and uh, so that's where we shot, that's why we shot it there. So I understand the film won Best Cinematography Award at the Fantasia Film Festival last year. Tell us about that. That was, well, first of all, it was um, just such a joy to be um, accepted into it. And, you know, it was the first festival we applied to and the first one we got into. And uh, for us, especially for this film, it was such, uh, a moment of, of, of pride, especially for Ben, who was a cinematographer, um, because that's what we focused very much on on, on this film. And we, we tried to make every frame a painting in itself, you know? Um, so to be recognized by the festival for that work, for the work Ben did, just incredible. And, and after our, we got accepted in that, we submitted to more festivals around the world, and we it screened in a few places around Europe, and. I mean, I think just recently we, we found out that uh, we won a bronze medal at Toronto After Dark Film Festival for short film, best short film or something. So I know it's uh, fantastic, yeah. <laughs> I understand this is the first in a trilogy, so tell us about part two and part three. Part two and part three, well, the first film was very, um, we wanted to have it like open inter interpretation, right? So it's a, my brother and I, uh, we think of them more as visual poems, right? So part two and part three will continue in that fashion. Um, and where the children and will come back in the films and the characters will, will reappear, but not in the way you might expect, where the, the, the clue is in the title of the project. The project is called Kin Fables. So there's more than one fable telling this one story, one grand vision. Le premier volet, vous l'avez financé vous-même. Vous faites oui. appel à, au socio-financement pour les deux prochains. C'est ça. Euh, Pouvez-vous nous parler de ça Comment ça marche et la réponse que vous avez à date Oui. Il um, y, y a deux sites principaux uh, où, qui nous offrent le socio-financement. Il y a Kickstarter, il y a Indiegogo. Nous, notre campagne est sur Kickstarter. Um, puis avec Kickstarter, vous êtes capable, uh, mais on est capable de, 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 de lancer un projet online pour que euh, des gens, n'importe qui peut, peut aller trouver notre projet. Et s'ils si ils aiment le projet, ils peuvent donner euh, 
de l'argent ou de contribuer à notre projet et à notre vision. Euh, mais en retour, ce qui, ce qui est le fun avec Kickstarter, c'est que vous êtes capable de... Nous, de notre côté, on peut donner des, des rewards, des, 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 des cadeaux. Fait que, par exemple, euh, la musique du film est, est disponible euh, pour comme 5 dollars. Alors, si vous donnez 5 dollars, vous avez la musique. Euh, si vous donnez 40 dollars, vous avez la musique et un poster, par exemple. You know. Et ça part comme ça. Fait que ça. Puis ça, 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 va, ça va pas mal bien à date. What type of response are you getting from the uh, crowdfunding initiative? No, not bad. It, it's uh, we were trying to raise twenty-five thousand dollars, and we're about a third of the way there right now. And we have twenty-two days left. It's only the campaign only lasts for one month, um, and if we don't get the the end result, we get nothing. So it's all or nothing. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so it was so far. It's it's going well and. Of course, uh, running a Kickstarter campaign is very much like a, it's a full-time job almost. You have to email everybody you know. You got to keep pushing it out there. You have to write to blogs. You have to keep your fans updated. Um, and I think a reason why we're doing so well uh, right at this moment is because uh, we've already had fans from Kin, from the first one. So people who saw the first one, they want to see the next ones. And that's why uh, so far so good. Fingers crossed. <laughs> À ce sujet, la productrice de l'émission m'informe que vous avez le soutien inconditionnel de la télévision communautaire, c'est sur la télé. Merci beaucoup. Très apprécié. Wow. As I understand, it's not just the movie that, that's part of the package. There's also a book, a CD, uh, and even jewelry. Can you tell us about that end? Yeah, it's um, it's uh, it's really a multimedia project in the end. I mean, the films are the focus of of what the project's all about. But complementing that, we have I mean, the music itself, it's, there's a full-length album in the works. Um, there is the graphic novel, which is going to explore more of that world we're trying to create. So we, you get to see more of the characters, you get to understand more about what the story is more, like what the, yeah, what the story's about. Um, we have uh, jewelry, like the little girl has this necklace and the headpiece and everything. So that was made by an artist in Montreal. Um, she's making jewelry for the Kickstarter campaign. Um, so it's we have a whole whole lot of things to offer. Yeah. Who are the musicians that do the music? Uh, me. <laughs> yeah. And the artwork in the graphic novels. That's me as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Too. Pretty much. Yeah. We're, it's it's uh, I'm trying to like wear many hats in this in this project. You know, it's very important to understand that uh, we're a duo of brothers, my Benjamin and me, and uh, we love films so much and we we think that cinema is the ultimate art form because in cinema you touch everything you you i mean i'm, I'm a trained uh, concept artist so i do storyboards i'm sketching and everything uh, but you you have not only the art like i don't only get to draw in movies but i also get to you know have a hand in the music and then have a hand at telling the story with my brother who's uh, like the the cinematographer and the, the cameraman and all that And cinema for us is really our way to encompass all those different artistic disciplines and put it into one final product. Yeah. Um, how can people contribute to the crowdfunding to, to, to see this through to realization? First of all, I love them to watch the first, the first part called Kin. Um, and then they can go on our, either our website or on Kickstarter. But on our website, there's a link to the Kickstarter. So the web, if you go to our website, everything's there. And they can go on, on from our site to Kickstarter, where they can contribute any amount they feel what they, they'd like to give. It could be anything. It could be, you know, $1, and it makes a difference. Yeah. Thanks so much for joining us, and best of luck getting the funding for the final two films. Thanks so much. Thanks for having me. Ah, merci d'être venu en studio, et on va se quitter en regardant des images de, du premier volet. Kim. Dans le cadre de la semaine de la santé mentale en avril prochain, la CDC vous invite à la conférence de Fletcher Peacock, auteur du best-seller « Arroser les fleurs, pas les mauvaises herbes ». Le thème abordé est « Apprivoiser la communication vers les solutions 
La conférence aura lieu mercredi 24 avril à 19h au Théâtre Paul-Émile Meloche à Vaudreuil-Dorion. Local artists will be exhibiting at the St. Lazare Municipal Library until March 21st during regular business hours at 1275 Rue Dubois. Residents will have the opportunity to admire over 40 artworks created by local artists displayed within the library. Comme quoi tes réseaux emploi entrepreneurship unissent leurs ressources pour desservir les nouveaux arrivants à l'île Pérou. Le service d'intégration sociale des immigrants offrira un accompagnement individualisé pour permettre aux personnes nouvellement arrivées de s'informer et d'obtenir de l'aide localement. Votre excellente artiste Martine Dugal invite les résidents à voir les works de sa première solo exhibition titled Unchained, qui va run at Maison Tressler until May 25th. The artist's abstract style is described as evocative of liberation and is presented in works of oil, acrylic and mixed media. Le Centre local de développement Vaudreuil-Soulanges annonce l'ouverture des inscriptions pour le sommet économique Vaudreuil-Soulanges 2014, qui se tiendra le 11 juin prochain au chapiteau Eugène Chaplin à Vaudreuil-Dorion. Les entrepreneurs qui veulent contribuer au développement économique de la région peuvent s'inscrire sur le site internet du sommet. A vendor fair will be held at Hudson's Community Center March 22nd to raise funds for Community Wings Charity. Approximately 40 vendors will be selling their services or products at a discounted price and donating a percentage of their daily sales to Community Wings, a growing charity that helps as many families in need by giving them food and clothing or whatever they currently need. The event will include food and entertainment for children, including shows, music and taste tests. Voilà, c'est déjà tout pour cette émission. Carmen, dans les semaines qui suivent, nous allons recevoir des candidats aux élections provinciales qui se déroulent en ce moment au Québec. So if you want to know more about your provincial candidates, stay tuned. Thanks for joining us. Have a good week. Merci. À bientôt. Vous voulez présenter une section de l'hebdo régional bilingue de Vaudreuil-Soulanges? Contactez notre équipe pour savoir comment votre logo pourrait être vu par les centaines de citoyens qui nous regardent chaque semaine à la télévision et sur le web.